Alright, I'm going to make a quick video here on bullet stabilization and bullet twists. Um, these are some 6.5 mm bullets or 264s. This one is a 142 Sierra and this is a 120 grain nozzler. A lot of people might be wondering, can my barrel stabilize a certain bullet? And <clears throat> of course, many of you know, it's actually based on the barrel twist. A general rule of thumb is, um, and there's some charts online where you can find these twist rates and stuff, but um, most people go off weights of bullets, and that's not really um, conducive to stabilization. I mean, the weight is kind of a, a part of it, but it's not all of it. Uh, the length of the bullet is actually what is the stabilizing factor, more so than the weight. And they both kind of work together, so... This 142 and a 6.5 won't stabilize unless it's in, say, an 8 twist or an 8.5 twist or in sometimes even 9 twists. Um, the, it also depends on the length of the barrel and how fast you're shooting them, too. Sometimes you can get away with shooting a, a longer bullet like this in, say, a 9 or maybe even a 9.5 twist if you got a longer barrel, like a 28 or 30 inch, and you're pushing it. Um, at some higher speeds, then they, they might stabilize, but not always. Um, whereas this 120, you could use, you know, a 10 or a, uh, you could probably use a 12 twist. Um, and I'm not sure right offhand how slow you need it. Um, and I guess another thing I should mention is the twist rate is when they say 1 in 7 twist, that means for every seven inches down the barrel you go it makes one full revolution so seven inches down the barrel you get one revolution that's a one in seven or if you go ten that's a one in ten and so on and so forth so um, a lot of guys when they plan on shooting heavier bullets like the 142s they'll just go straight to a one in eight twist when they're building a rifle um, these 120s are often shot in factory rifles. You know, people start hand loading for themselves, and and uh, a lot of factory barrels aren't fast twists like eight twists, because <clears throat> in the past most people haven't been shooting these bullets, and um, some of these high high uh, BC VLD bullets haven't come out. Um, you know, in the past ten years they've come out with quite a few more versions of many different bullets like this so people now are going more towards quicker twists in their rifle barrels on custom rifles. A way you can also figure out if you know a certain bullet will stabilize in your barrel is uh, you can check the barrel twist on it and I'll make a video on that but you check the barrel twist or if you know what your barrel twist is you can go online, like I said, and find there's charts out there that'll kind of give you a general idea, and they're all based on weights. But if you want to get more accurate, there's the Greenhill formula that you measure the length of the bullet, and I believe the density, and a few other things. You punch that in, and it gives you um, the optimal twist rate, or the twist rate that uh, <coughs> you could fire that bullet out of. What will happen if you have, say, a 10 twist? Um, say you have a 10 twist like, I don't know, a 260 or something like that and you want to shoot these 142's and you have a 20 inch barrel what will happen with these 142 grains if you try and shoot them, they'll shoot just fine out of your gun but they won't shoot groups at all what they'll end up doing is they'll they'll pitch and yaw and they'll keyhole so they won't stabilize so instead of having a nice round bullet hole by the time this bullet gets down range, your bullet hole will look like that. Of course, my bullets are rolling around here, but so you'll get these these oblong or these keyhole bullet holes, and then you know that that is not being stabilized. So that that bullet is um, either too long, too heavy, or it's not going fast enough. I've had rifles do this before where they'll keyhole and then you speed them up 
uh, you know, it kind of depends. You got you kind of got to be right on the edge. They usually don't keyhole this bad, but if you got, you know, like a just a little bit, that's not a good picture, but a little bit of a keyhole, and it's not perfectly round. Sometimes you can speed them up um, if if your case will take it, if your rifle will take it. So you're, you know, you don't obviously you don't want to be firing unsafe charges, but you speed them up, and sometimes they'll stabilize them. Not always, but sometimes. So that's just kind of a quick overview of uh, barrel twist and bolt stabilization. Um, if you get into it, it's a way more involved than kind of what I just explained, but that's kind of the basics of it. Um, so if you're out there looking, trying to figure out what what bullet will work best, or if or if you happen to have some loaded up and you start getting keyholes like this, well, that's why. And there are some rifles that will stabilize these even on a, a slower twist. Um, it kind of depends on the rifle. If this bullet calls for an eight twist, which let me look and see, I think they I think they recommend an eight twist or an eight and a half twist for those. But sometimes if you have a nine or nine and a half twist, for some odd reason, sometimes they'll stabilize. So if you're like, you know, one one number off or half a number off, sometimes you know you can get them to shoot, but it's kind of a coin flip. Um, and if you're, if they're re recommended for a one and eight, and you've got a one and ten, they most times won't shoot. It's kind of ends up being a waste of time, a waste of money. So, if you got a slower twist and you're trying to make one of these quick twist bullets work, it usually doesn't work. Nine, pff, ninety five, ninety six times out of a hundred, it won't work. So, but like I said, it it depends on a few other things too. So. Hope that kind of gives you just a general idea of uh, bullet twist, bullet stabilization, and then the keyholing thing. So, there you go.